Hi, in this problem we're going to find the exact value of the tangent of pi over 12. So to do this, we're going to start by writing pi over 12 as either a sum or difference of two more familiar angles. So 4 minus 3 is 1, and so that makes me think that we can write pi over 12 as 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. And these have been carefully chosen because these work, right? 4 pi over 12 is the same thing as pi over 3 because 4 goes into 12 three times. So this is pi over 3. And we know uh, this angle. This is a very familiar angle. We can compute the trig function values of this angle minus, and then 3 goes into 12 four times. So this is pi over 4. Again, a very familiar angle. So it looks like we have pi over 12 written as a difference of two more familiar angles. So we're going to use the difference formula for the tangent function. I'm going to go ahead and write it down so we have it here on the screen. So the tangent of x minus y is equal to tangent of x minus tangent of y. And this is all being divided by 1 plus tangent x, tangent y. So 1 plus tan x, tan y. So this is the formula that we're going to apply to this. So step one in a problem like this is to first, again, figure out how you can write the pi over 12 as a difference of two other, or some of, of two other familiar angles. Because there's a one here though, this is a, you know, there's a, it's one pi. Um, I couldn't really think of a way to write it as a sum. <laughs> so uh, the difference formula seemed to be better. If it was something like seven pi over 12 instead, in that case, you could do something like four pi over 12 plus three pi over 12. In this case, you would use the other formula for the sum. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this formula to our problem here. I'm gonna switch colors. So we have the tangent of pi over 12. That's equal to the tangent of, and so now let's go ahead and write pi over 12 using what we discovered. Pi over 12 is equal to pi over three minus pi over four. So this will be pi over three minus pi over four. And so here you see that x is going to be pi over three and y is pi over four. If you like, you can specify it. So I can write it here maybe. That could be helpful. x is pi over three y is pi over four. It makes it a little bit easier to check your work. You don't have to, but if you feel you need to, you certainly can. So this is going to be tangent of pi over three because our x is pi over three. So you see it makes it a little bit easier. Minus tangent of y. So y is pi over four. And some people skip steps, like they say, oh, I know what the tangent of pi over four is. I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. That's fine, you can do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just show all the work. It just makes it a little bit easier to check your work. So tan x, again, x was pi over three. So this is tan of pi over three. And then tan y, again, y is pi over four. So this is tan of pi over four. Good stuff. Okay, let's keep going. So now we just basically have to uh, figure out what these trig function values actually are. So this is equal to, I'm gonna come over here. So tangent of pi over three is the square root of three, just from memory, minus, and the tangent of pi over four is one. This is all divided by one plus, again, tangent of pi over three is the square root of three, and the tangent of pi over four is one, so times one. This is equal to square root of three minus one over one plus square root of three. So a lot of people aren't okay uh, with the answers in this form. Uh, many people require that you um, not leave square roots in the denominator. So if you want to, or if you're taking a class maybe in high school or college, and you're required to rationalize, let me show you how to keep going. Uh, but this is the correct answer. But again, many people will consider this not simplified. So let me show you how to actually simplify it. So to simplify this, basically, you have to get rid of the square root on the bottom. 
Uh, for many people, that's not something that's good. And so it's a custom, it's customary to simplify in most cases. So what you do is you multiply by one in a clever way. Basically, you multiply by one minus the square root of three over one minus the square root of three. Note these are exactly the same. So this actually cancels and you're basically multiplying by one. So you're multiplying by one in a clever way. And to get this, you basically switch the sign. So if there was a minus here, you would put a plus here. So you just always switch the sign. This is called rationalizing the denominator. All right, so this is equal to, so let's do the numerator first. In the numerator, we're just gonna distribute the square root of three times one is the square root of three. The square root of three times negative square root of three is gonna be minus three, right? Because the square root of three times the square root of three uh, is the square root of three squared, so you just get three, and there's a minus here. So now we'll do the one, negative one times one is negative one, and then negative one times negative square root of three is plus square root of three, because it's negative and negative, okay? Negative one times negative square root of three is plus square root of three. All of this is divided by, so here's where you have to use a formula, or you can, you don't have to use it, but it's better. So this is a, plus b times a minus b, and recall that's equal to a squared minus b squared. That's the difference of squares formula. So in this particular example, a is equal to one, and b is equal to the square root of three. So this will be one squared, which is one, minus b squared, which is basically the square root of three squared, which is three. So it's a squared minus b squared. Again, in this case, it would be, it would be one squared minus the square root of three squared which is just one minus three, okay? All right, let's keep going. We're almost done with this problem. This is equal to, let's see, we have the square root of three plus the square root of three. That gives us two of those, so we get two square root of three. Negative three minus one is negative four. And then down here, one minus three is negative two. And again, still not really in an acceptable place. I honestly think this is worse than before. <laughs> so, because you have this negative two on the bottom, not a good way to leave your answer. Um, let's break it up into two fractions. So it's this over the bottom. So this is two square root of three over negative two. And then it'll be minus four over negative two. Get this over negative two. Cancel, so this is equal to negative square root of three plus two, right? Because there's already a negative there. And so that would be the final answer to this problem. So a little bit more involved. Usually when you have problems with the tangent function, they take a little bit more work. Um, another way to write the answer would be two minus root three. Most people would write it that way, but either is okay. And again, honestly, you could have left your answer like this. Let me just highlight it in red. So a bit of a mess here. So this is actually this red box here, this is correct. Okay, this is correct. But uh, many people will consider it incorrect because it's not rationalized, and that's fine. Um, it's important to know how to rationalize. It's a good skill. Um, so yeah, so this is probably a much better answer. Um, yeah, much better. This is much better. And also correct. Kind of cool. Good luck.